Welcome to the Empaths Code, self-protection tips for empaths, care bears, and highly sensitive people with your girl, Keely Tavana. So this is all about empathic people who are often incredibly sensitive. We're emotional people. We feel things who have a deep level of compassion, consideration, and understanding towards others. However, if you're an unprotected empath, then you can get confused about why giving hurts and why people can be so unnecessarily difficult, especially when you're only being nice. These situations can cause untold amounts of stress, reflection, and if you're not careful, self-condemnation, leaving you, the empathic soul, baffled as to why giving hurts so much. These situations can cause untold amounts of stress, self-reflection and self-condemnation. And this is not great for you. And often because we don't understand the deeper reasons behind why we give, we can end up repeating the same cycles again and again. You see, empathy can be a problem in this instance, as you may be abused, used and confused The love empaths we give has an amazing quality, yet self-protection is a must. When you give undiscriminately, you will end up hurting yourself because you often give to the wrong folks and you may not give to yourself. So the following tips are inspired and created to help you begin to learn how to protect your kindness. Tip one, you have an empathic gift and with any gift comes responsibility. If you're at a stage where you feel that empathy is a curse, that's because your empathy is working against you and you don't know how to protect it. Two, self-responsibility is essential for protecting your empathic nature. When you understand self-responsibility, you'll begin to realize Nobody can do anything to you. You have to be curious about the ways that you've done it to yourself. When you fail to protect yourself, you'll compromise your caregiving essence and be vulnerable to abuse. However, having someone trade on your kindness will be detrimental to your well being. This is why narcissists and the empaths go so hand in hand. It's where selflessness meets selfishness, and that toxic mix mix can be very damaging for us. So pay careful attention if you tend to not take responsibility for protecting your sensitive nature. This will result in you developing a victim consciousness where everybody else is to blame, but you don't check yourself to understand what is it that you do that creates the situation that you don't want to be in. Tip three, learning to say no sometimes is good for the soul. Notice any resistance that that comes up for you. Notice what your body does when you have the desire to say no and begin to make notes. If you're not journaling, journal your reactions in your journal. Begin to build this relationship with yourself. Don't allow your resistance to spring you into saying yes. Your knee jerk, your default reaction is often yes. What you, my encouragement for you is to do nothing and just observe. If saying no is too overwhelming, just notice the conflict with yourself. Observe these reactions, notice what your body does and make good notes. Tip four, guilt is a massive tool for manipulation and control. So notice if guilt arrives when you take steps to protect your empathy. Who are the people who make you feel most guilty? Notice your reactions but take no action, observe, make notes, begin to develop an awareness of your precious self. And like I said, note down anyone that takes you on guilt trips. These people are the most likely to be resistant to any of your changes. Tip five, learn to accept people and situations as they are, not as you want to be. Acceptance doesn't mean we like it, but it frees us from trying to change people. It, re- it helps us to stop living in hope, wishing and wanting that they will change and see our worth. 
The empathic way often results in empaths overgiving, helping and encouraging others in life changing ways, which is a beautiful thing, but you have to be doing this in the right context, a context where you don't feel abused, used, and where you're not filled with resentment and rage because people are taking advantage of you. However, if you as an empathic person falls into the wrong relationship, empathy, your empathy, will become a problem as an individual may become abused, used and confused. The love empaths have is amazing, it's life changing, yet self protection is a must. The tips enclosed will help you protect your kindness. Tip six, why do you often need to give? Have you ever questioned what is your giving about? What drives your behavior? It's good to get curious about your empathy, especially when you're dealing with an unnecessarily difficult person. Ask yourself, what do I hope to gain from this giving situation? Am I seeking validation? Martyrdom maybe? Ooh, interesting. These are incredibly important questions for you to ponder upon. Try to practice doing just enough. Empaths, have a tendency to go above and beyond. Notice any resistance that comes up for you when you pull back and you do just enough. And note down, make a note of what you notice and most importantly, the fears that arise because often it's the fears that keep us stuck. Tip eight, boundaries will be essential to protect your empathic nature. However, boundaries need consequences. So people are clear about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable to you. When you start putting boundaries in place, notice any resistance that you experience within yourself and pay good attention to how others react to your boundaries. And if they try to sanction you for changing your behavior, these are usually the people who have benefited the most from your self-sacrificing ways. So it's gonna be incredibly inconvenient for them when you begin to change. Be careful if you justify the self-centered actions of others. In such instances, stop with elaborate excuses. Empaths were great at making justifications for people. And notice if uncomfortable truths come into your awareness. This is a process of just beginning to notice the resistance that comes up for you and as ever, make good notes. Tip 10, empaths often have good intentions to help. However, an unintended consequence of an empath's helpfulness is the disempowerment of others. Have you noticed that sometimes your overgiving results in people becoming lazy, idle, and having a super high expectation that you will do, do, do for them. They have a sense of entitlement. And when you pull back, they'll also develop resentment. These are the people who will be the most resistant to your change. You see, because if you've always rescued people, they don't end up developing their own skills for saving themselves. This can lead to people becoming dependent, relying on us for the answers to their own calamities. Empaths, we have good intentions and unintended consequences can occur. How can you empower them to do for themselves is the question. You see, when we overdo for people, it's not great for us. So one of the things that can be important is to ask open-ended questions of the people who you've supported developing a coaching style. That involves us using the who, the where, the when, the how. How do you think you can solve your problem? What do you think you need to do next? This will encourage others to start considering ways to help themselves. And it's also letting them know that you are not going to perpetually find solutions to their problems. Tip 11, thinking that others will see your worth by your overgiving empaths. This is a big challenge for us. We want people to value us and appreciate us. Nothing wrong with that. 
But sometimes our giving is also connected to our desire to feel valuable and worthy. And when that doesn't come back from people, we can feel resentment and disappointment. In fact, some people will benefit from you playing small and will take your glory. So they don't expect you to know your worth. This often happens in the workplace. Have you ever had the situation where you've done lots of work, but other people take the credit? I'm encouraging you to step into your power. I know you'll think you're bragging, but in actual fact, it may do you the world of good to begin to speak up about yourself. Us empaths are not always great at taking compliments. Have you ever noticed how some people with half the talent get the opportunities? One reason may be because they talk a good game and in some instances trade upon empathic people not always knowing their worth. The reality is you have to be your own cheerleader. You have to know your worth. You have to be your own advocate. Embrace this insight. It will challenge you and in the long run, could save you much frustration. And if you think about that in the workplace, that also could increase your income if you begin to show your colors, show your genius, show your greatness, rather than continuously shying away. Step into your power. You have so much talent that is not being recognized by you. Others will capitalize on your talent for their advantage. Tip 12, learn to distance yourself or limit time with energy drainers and people prob- people who focus on problems. People who focus on problems will drain your energy because they get stuck in life and again, will target you for solutions or they'll just think that you are someone they can dump on. Tip 13, when giving hurts, Ask yourself, what expectations, hopes, fantasies did you have about this situation? If you feel disappointed and frustrated because you've gone on above and beyond for someone, what did you hope they would do? Notice your reactions, make good notes, and notice any resistance when you begin to pull back. Notice how uncomfortable that can be for you. It's absolutely okay because we're beginning to shift and anytime we exhibit new behavior, it will be uncomfortable. Just like bearing, wearing a new pair of shoes. Sometimes we have to wear them in at home because they're just, we're not sure. New behaviors can become uncomfortable. Tip 14, remember empathy is a gift. Not everyone has. All too often we expect others will treat us in reciprocal ways. And this is seldom the case. Remember, selflessness often attracts selfishness. So when it doesn't come back, when we expect common decency to be common, we need to understand the way that we treat others is not necessarily the way they would treat us. Other people have other gifts and not everyone has an empathic way of being. Tip 15, anytime you're annoyed, frustrated or livid with the selfish actions of others, remember expectation is the mother of all disappointment. So ask yourself when you're feeling frustrated, we're going inwards, we're asking self-inquiring questions. One of the challenges us empaths have is we're often looking for the answers outside of ourselves when the answers are always within. Sometimes it's in your best interest to stop the giving and notice what occurs within you. That's not about them. It's always about us. Tip 16. It's in your nature to care. It's the empath's way. But do so mindfully. Can you give without an agenda? When you do, life gets easier. Disappointment often arises when we don't get back what we think we deserve. The key here is to begin to give and expect nothing. If the giving hurts, maybe it's time to stop. Tip 17, when you understand you have a gift, 
other people's selfish, self-centered ways will begin to make much more sense. It may benefit you to think about where you can find your tribe of like-minded people. And if you are seeking a tribe, then my encouragement to you is click the link below. Consider joining the Narcissism Awareness Community where we are helping empathic people who are embroiled in one way difficult relationships to grow and thrive. Tip 18, when giving hurts, practice the art of not giving and notice your first three reactions. Tip 19, empathic people can often get entangled with unnecessarily difficult people. These folks are often our bipolar opposite recorrection, our polar opposite, and may well be our nemesis. Just like Superman has a nemesis, Batman has a nemesis. We all have an enemy, an arch rival. We must be mindful and pay good attention to not get involved in a toxic mix. If you feel overwhelmed or baffled by your emotions and it's getting the best of you, I encourage you to seek professional help because I believe and my clients have shown me there is only so far we can go on our own. Tip 20, your empathic gift is never a curse. Remember, you have a gift and take compassionate steps to apply these tips to safeguard your greatness. This, my friend, is your responsibility. People can't use us without our permission. I hope these tips have been beneficial to you. I hope it's got you thinking about yourself, turning inwards rather than looking for the answers outside of ourselves. Your precious life and gifts are yours for you to protect. If you're watching this video, you're moving in the right direction. Going within is the way to change the outside. Most of all, I hope this video has encouraged you to take one tiny action to enrich and change your precious life. Now ask yourself, do you absorb other people's emotions and stress? Are you a nurturer or mother figure to family and friends? Have you been labeled as too sensitive or too emotional? Do you have a hard time watching negative or harsh images on television? Do you find it incredibly difficult to deal with confrontations and arguments? Are the person who are you the person who someone seems to come to for advice, support, help, or healing? This is the empath's way. But like I've said, if you're a naive or unprotected empath, empathy can feel very, very difficult. Again, do you have a hard time practicing self-love and boundaries? Do you often attract narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, or unnecessarily difficult people, energy vampires, or problem-focused souls? Did you have a parent who was highly selfish and demanding and didn't attend to your needs? Pay attention. Did you sometimes have to parent your parent, and did you take on their problems and often find the solutions? Good questions to ask the self. Do you feel compelled to repay someone? went back when they have been kind to you? Do you struggle to receive? If you've answered yes or resonated with any of these questions, feel free to schedule a call, check the link below, and let's talk about how we can support you to move on with your precious life. Do take care of you, because if you don't, no one is coming to save you, my friend. We must learn to save ourselves. Peace.